Hello. The purpose of this video, or objective, is to learn about rate of change and to be able to calculate the rate given a table or graph. Now, if we're going to be talking about rate of change, you should know what rate means. And rate's one of those words that I've used so often, I, I kind of forgot exactly what the meaning was. So I went back to the dictionary. And it said, it said, rate, a quantity measured with respect to another quantity. So there actually is two pieces, two different quantities involved here. And you may remember back to when working with the dirt formula, the distance equals rate times time. Well, remember the rate in that was the speed of the object. And speed was not meters, it wasn't seconds, it wasn't miles, it wasn't feet. It was miles per hour, feet per second. There were two units involved in that. And that's what a rate, a rate involves two units. Uh, looking at this problem here, you may remember when we talked about uh, the analyzing tables and graphs, how we went through the analysis using the arithmetic sequence. And when we saw if you had the same change from one to two, you know, from this to this, is zero to one, you have plus one, plus one, plus one. Same change from here to here. We did the second minus the first, second minus the first. We got a plus five, second minus the first. You got a plus five. We saw that change of plus five here. We said if the change was the same for this row as it was for this row, you had a linear relation. And that's still true. We're taking this one step further because we're not going to talk about just the change in this row and the change in that row. We're going to combine them together and we're going to give that combination a name. Combining the y and the x, putting the y over the x, we're going to have 5 over 1. And this, this combination here, the y over x, is our rate of change. Rate of change is equal to the delta y over delta x. Delta is a Greek letter, kind of looks like a triangle. It stands for the change or difference between change in y, change in x. So the change in the y value over the change in the x value gives you the rate of change. So let's calculate the rate of change for this table. Going from here to here. We have a plus 2 from here to here. We have a plus 10. From here to here, we have a plus 1. And from here to here, we have a plus 5. It doesn't look the same. Well, let's see what happens if we keep going. Here to here, we have a plus 5. 115 minus the 110 gives you plus 5. From 3 to 4, we go up 1. All right, well... Up one, up one, up five, up five. So these look good, but right here we have up ten and up two. They're not quite the same. However, let's look at the rate here. The rate here is going to be ten over two. Here the rate of change is five over one. Here the rate of change is five over one. Well, if we're talking about the rate of change... 10 over 2 is the same as 5 over 1. If you divide those both by 2, you simplify down to 5 over 1. So as it turns out, the linear, this is a linear relationship, and the rate of change is going to be that 5 over 1. Just because my two examples have worked out to be 5 over 1 doesn't mean the rate of change is always going to be 5 over 1. Please keep that in mind. As it turns out, the, in order to be linear, you have to remember the rate of change between any two points in a linear relationship is the same. Any two points. Between this point and this point would be 115 minus 95, which would be 20. And it would be 4 minus 0 on the bottom, which would be 4, which also reduces to 5 over 1. Any two points, find the difference between them, change in y or the change in x, you are going to get that 5 over 1. It doesn't matter which two points you choose. 
So when we were working with the arithmetic sequences, although we had to find that constant change being the same on the top, the same on the bottom, it's possible that you could have a different change as long as, the ch as, long as when you simplify it, it all works out to be that same ratio or fraction, that same rate of change. Uh, here we ask to find the constant rate of change and interpret its meaning. We've got to find the rate of change. Okay, so first thing we do is go find the difference between here and here. That's plus one. Between here and here, plus one. Here and here, plus one. These two, 100 minus 50 is 50. 150 minus 100 is 50. And again, we have 50 here. So we're adding 50, adding 50, adding 50. So it looks like our rate of change is the y over the x, 50 miles over one hour. Notice how this time I included the units. Last time it was just x and y. When they talk rate of change, they're almost always going to have units involved because units are a major part of rates. Now here we said to find the constant rate of change and interpret its meaning. This is the constant rate of change. It's changing by 50 miles per hour, a constant 50 miles per hour. However, to describe it, we actually have to write, to interpret it. It's the same as saying describe it. Write it out in words. The object travels at, at a rate of 50 miles per hour. I could also write that the object travels 50 miles in an hour. The sentence is going to have different arrangements there, but the major points are the 50 miles an hour. You need to include both of those numbers in your interpretation. You need to include the fact that it's something doing that. It's not just, uh, I wrote object because I wasn't told this was a plane, a car, a boat. I don't know. So I put object. It needs to have a complete sentence restating the question. Well, maybe not much of a restate in this one. But you got to include that rate. You got to include the numbers. Otherwise, you have not interpreted properly. Clue the numbers in. It's not enough just to have because, or IDK is definitely not going to work. Here, we are given a graph, and we're asked to do the same thing. Find the constant rate of change and interpret its meaning. So the constant rate of change, well, going from this point to this point, I went up. 100 from 200 to 300 was a change of 100. I went over from 1 to 2 was a change of 1. So plus 1 plus 100. Well, what the rate of change is change in y over change in x. Remember, y is the y axis, the vertical. So we're talking about 100 over 1. 100 over 1. And if we check, you'll see that for every one we go over, we are going up 100, over 1, up 100. <coughs> that is our constant rate of change. 100 what? It's 100 feet, 1 what per minute. So our full answer would say the rocket goes up 100 feet in 1 minute. Again, you write that out in a full sentence. This is not enough. You got to write it out using a full sentence and words. Here we're asked to determine whether the relationship between the two quantities described in the table is linear. If so, find the constant rate of change. If not, explain your reasoning. Well, we talked about how to find the constant rate of change, and that's just simply that fraction. So we'd love it if it worked out that way. But I'm telling you right now, this one is not linear. I did that on purpose because I want to, you to see how to explain your reasoning. 
That's an important part. Remember, explain is a key word saying that you need to have at least two sentences, complete sentences. All right, so here we go. We have the time going from one to two is a plus one. From two to three is a plus one. From here to here, we have a plus, let me check my notes on this one. We have a plus, Fourteen point seven. From here to here, we do the second minus the first, and we're going to get plus twenty-four point five. Right there, we can tell it's not a constant rate of change, so we know it's not linear. How do we explain that? Well, remember CSRQ, complete sentences restating the question. What's the question here? Uh, if not, explain your reasoning. So we're saying if we're saying it is not a relationship that is linear. So let's take a look at my answer and break it down. The relationship between the two quantities. Remember that was part of the question there. Distance and time. Notice how I wrote in the x and y titles into my explanation. Is not linear. There's my answer. It's saying is not linear. That's the answer. That's the answer part of it. But I have to explain further on it. The rate of change from one to two seconds, that first part there, was 14.7 meters per second. While the rate of change from two to three seconds, it was 24.5 meters per second. They're not the same. So the rate of change is not constant. That's what it's saying. The rate of change is not constant. Going from here to here was that. From there to there it was that. They're not the same. Could I have written this out with less words? Mm, not a whole lot less. When they ask you to explain, they are looking for a lot of words. You guys can't be afraid to write on these. Could I have written it with more words? Believe it or not, yes, I could have. Okay. Getting back to the you do's here, we have to find the constant rate of change for each graph slash table and interpret the meaning. Remember, interpret the meaning means write out the words. Now, since some of this is a little small, I'm going to read it off before asking you to pause. Coats needed, cans of paint. And it's 2, 3, 4 for the coats needed, 5, 8, 11 for the cans of paint. Down here, it says number of bad calls is the label for the y-axis, and it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Here we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're talking about years experience. What it doesn't say there is what I'm talking about is a referee's bad calls in a game that based on their years of experience. A little humorous there. Okay, pause the video, give these two a try, and we'll come back. Welcome back. Coats needed, we got a plus one, plus one, plus three, plus three. So we do have a constant rate of change. That constant rate of change is going to be three over one, the y over the x. How do I know this is a y? First row's x, second row's y. Three over one, and that's three coats, because, no, sorry, this is the three cans, of paint per coat. So it takes three cans of paint to create one coat on whatever it is we're painting. And I should, what you write out? You would write out, it takes three cans to create one coat of paint. Write it out, not just like this, but using actual words. I don't have room on the board, otherwise I would. Over here, number of bad calls going from here to here we went plus one going up we went from two to six which was a change of four and this is going to be the same change plus one plus four so the rate of change the y over the x is going to be four over one which is number of bad calls four bad calls per year of experience. Okay.
Here we could add a little bit more to the interpretation. Instead of just saying four bad calls per year of experience, we can make a note that the, lo the longer they've been working as a ref, the worse they are at it because they keep making more bad calls. Interpret can include something like that as well. All right, bonus, bonus time. Bonus, rate of change and slope. After we finish rate of change, we're going to be moving on to slope rather quickly because rate of change and slope are the same thing. And when you're talking about slope, we're going to be working with this formula here, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Slope is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When I'm finding that rate of change, I'm doing the second minus the first y2 value, the second y value minus the first y value. That goes on top. X2, X1, first, uh, second X value minus the first X value. It's nothing new. We've been doing this. It's just going to look different because we're going to go straight to a formula to work with it. All right. Keep that in mind when we go on to rate of change. So go on to slope from rate of change. See you tomorrow in class.